Welcome back everyone to another episode of The Road Shows Me. My name's Dan and on today's episode, we are exploring the Pilbara region of Western Australia. You can see behind me, this is the campsite we've just gotten to for tonight. Absolutely breathtaking. I'll show you where we are on the map of Australia. We have driven all the way. We were in the Northern Territory. We crossed into Western Australia. We've driven the Gibb River Road. Now we're over here, basically underneath the air vent in this area called the Pilbara. This is another really famous, really remote region. There's tons of gravel roads in here. There's big rock formations, kind of mountains. There's some springs that I'm excited about. One of them is even a little bit hot. We might be getting there tomorrow. There's plenty of freshwater springs. There's tons to see and do here. This, a lot of people say, is the highlight of remote and wilderness Western Australia. So come with us, jump aboard, let's go. The Pilbara region of Western Australia. So check it out, we just finished cooking dinner and uh, one of the things I've learned here in Australia is that lots of overlanders have orange lights instead of like kind of bright white ones on their vehicle, you know, around camp and stuff. And for the first time, I guess I'm getting a really good lesson as to why. Check it out, look how many bugs are hanging around our light. So our light is actually just white, it isn't yellow. But look at them here on this, on the canvas. I think there's a few bugs hanging around. So I'm kind of hoping that when I turn off the light, all the bugs will go away. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Maybe next time I'll have orange lights on the outside of my vehicle. So we've just stopped here to air down as we head into what's called running waters. Hopefully, there's a hot spring down the end of this road. I'll just show you what it looks like. Here's our view. And I know I've said this a lot of times in Australia, but this is starting to look a bit like Africa again. So this is starting to feel a little bit like Namibia, uh, the more wild parts that I got to kind of over near the skeleton coast a bit. The only difference is there probably aren't gonna be any giraffes or elephants or zebras walking around out here. But I'll definitely let you know what we find Let's go for it. The Pilbara already putting a huge smile on my face. Check it out, this place is called Running Waters and it is a natural warm spring. There is warm water bubbling up from below, I believe. And we're just walking around checking it out. It's warmer than it should be, but it, it certainly isn't hot. But it uh, looks pretty nice for a dip, so we're just trying to find a good place, just wandering around. You can see though, we're just out here. I mean, for Australia, this kind of watering hole is pretty nice to be able to have and to be able to go for a swim because there's no crocodiles. How good is that? So I was really annoyed on the Gibb River Road. There was all these things that said there were gonna be rope swings at all the swimming holes, and there never were. Now, finally, we get, I mean, a pretty ordinary rope swing. So I think it's the best way to get in because then you get in quickly. I don't really trust this handle. It looks a bit weird, but bon voyage. What do we say? What's what's the word for jumping into water? Geronimo. Geronimo, thank you. Please don't break. Woo! <laughs> it's definitely warmer than it should be, but it isn't hot. 
Any crocodiles? <laughs> Please don't say that word. Okay, wow, so we were told the distances out here in Western Australia are enormous and safe to say I underestimated them. We've just driven 800 kilometers in two days, which is like $250 worth of fuel. But look where we've arrived, this is camp for the night. So this is the Callaghan River. We're gonna go up a little bit further to get to Callaghan Pools. We'll check that out in the morning though. We are beat, the sun has already gone down. Katie's just getting out a few things to set up camp but this is our spot on the river all to ourselves. We did check with some locals. Categorically, there are no crocodiles in here. I'm pretty happy about that. So I'd say there's a morning swim in my future. Right now though, we're gonna cook some dinner and just sit down and relax and enjoy not being in the Jeep. Although you might notice there's a rope swing. Surely we have to give that a shot. It's so much fun being 12 years old. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful morning it is. We are continuing up Callaghan's River, and this is the road in front of me that we drive along. <laughs> so I'm just walking up, partly to see if I can put the cameras down to get some videos and photos, but also just to have a good look, make sure there aren't any like really, really deep spots or anything like that. Usual story, should always walk a river crossing first. And again, no crocodiles, brings a really warm feeling to my heart. I don't really like crocodiles and I think they're behind us now. I don't think we're ever gonna see another one in Australia. So that's a good thing. And uh, I'm gonna check this out and we'll keep moving. I'm told there's like three or four river crossings and a couple of them get deeper. So that's why I'm on the lookout, see if I see any holes or any big boulders or anything. guys we were warned about this one this is the longest river crossing i can't be bothered walking it too far look into the distance through the reef you can't even see where the river crossing goes so intimidating let's go more katie katie's driving we're in low range let's see how big of a river crossing this turns into done how was that great. <laughs> that was actually really long that was uh well the gopro says we've been filming for two minutes so it's a pretty long river crossing So here we are guys, we've arrived at Calgan Pool. 
And you can see this is incredible. There's a massive rope swing, but unfortunately the water's not flowing right now and it looks kind of green and a bit stagnant. So I'd say we're probably not gonna swim in the pool today, but magic spot to come down here. There's stunning camping on the other side. And uh, something in the Pilbara here that people warned me about, this is a famous part of Australia, has really sharp rocks and everyone said, you know, this is where I'm gonna get tire damage. This is where mandatory, you must have two spare tires. I haven't had any tire problem, touch wood, I don't wanna jinx myself. But what we have had, we've already driven 45,000 kilometers around Australia without a single rock chip, even though it's a Jeep. Jeeps are famous for getting rock chips. And here we are in the last two days, we've had two massive rocks hit our windshield. And so the first one, this crack is now growing. Thankfully, it's going away from the driver's eye line, but this lower one, this big star, there's actually pieces of glass when I touch it. It's basically not gone right through, but there's little bits of glass flaking off. Thankfully, they're sort of out of the driver's eye line, especially because of my GPS. When you sit in the driver's seat, they're basically hidden behind the GPS, which is nice. But I mean, I'm gonna have to get it replaced. I don't actually know what the law is in Australia, but I assume any amount of rock chip is illegal given that safety here is higher priority than everything else. So <laughs> we made it most of the way around Australia with the original windscreen, but now it's gonna be time to get another one. But in the meantime though, Callaghan Pool, I recommend getting in here if you get a chance. Let's go and see what else we can find. So here we are guys in another beautiful campsite. There's actually a beautiful gorge back there behind me. It even has Aboriginal rock paintings, which is incredible. I'll show you in the morning. But for now, it's dinner time. We've had some long days on the road and we have yet another Aussie classic. Tonight, we have curried sausages. <laughs> Katie providing the soundtrack. So curried sausages, as it sounds like, those are sausages peas, carrots, onions, a bunch of curry powder, and then maybe some other flavor like beef stock, maybe some sultanas in there. That's a real Australian addition. Absolutely delicious. You can serve it on rice or tonight, we're serving it on mashed potatoes. What are sultanas? Man? What are sultanas? Uh, what's the translation? Raisins. Raisins, I don't remember. Took me a while too. Uh, so absolutely delicious meal, cannot wait. And you might notice too, we're both wearing our warmer clothes. These are the warmest clothes we have in Australia because finally the temperature has changed. So we've moved far enough south here on the West Coast that it is no longer scorching hot every day and every night. It is enjoyably cool in the evenings and we are really happy about it. So bon appetit, it's time for dinner and more adventures to come in the morning in the Pilbara. We even wore our toques last night. We even wore our toques. Translation of Took? A beanie. Beanie. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to bring you down and show you, this is the canyon that we camped on last night. And down here in the canyon, we've got all these Aboriginal uh, petroglyphs. And a petroglyph, I guess, is like a rock carving, not just a rock painting. So you can see a big one there on the rock. And actually, the more we walked around here last night after sunset, there are hundreds of them up and down this whole canyon on both sides. There's huge kangaroos, there's people, there's all kinds of pictures and stories depicted here in this gorge. It is absolutely beautiful. And it's really incredible to see here in Western Australia, there aren't any fences blocking us from any of this stuff. There aren't any like, you know, warning signs or limitations. We can just walk around and explore to our heart's content having a look at all this beautiful history that's here, these petroglyphs that are many, many thousands of years old, utterly incredible. And that brings us to the conclusion of this episode of the Pilbara Expedition. And so we've had an amazing time so far. The distances have been much bigger than I anticipated. Uh, the weather has cooled a little bit, which has been really nice. And if you've enjoyed this episode, do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, we are heading now to one of the most famous regions of the Pilbara to have a really good look and explore Karangini National Park, which hundreds of people told me I must see in Australia. I'll be honest, I'd never heard of it before I flew to Australia for this trip. So come with us on next week's episode as we explore Karangini 
and that whole area. So thanks again for watching. Have fun out there and maybe we'll bump into you on the road.